Wouldn't it be great if we could explore a VR world without being limited to the scale of a single room? This is probably a thought that's come across the mind of many a VR enthusiast at some point in their time with this hobby. By all means, this wouldn't really be all that odd of an opinion to have, depending on your selection of VR games to play, but it doesn't really make much sense at all when you look at the broader scope of the medium and realize we already can explore the whole of VR worlds. So why is it that in spite of having the ability to explore VR worlds unhindered, this thought can still come to mind? Stick around and we'll break down the issue a bit to find the insight that can be gleaned from within. Hello Virtual Dreamers, Gregory here. Not too long ago, I was playing the Alpha for Zenith Online, an upcoming VR MMO by Ramen VR, when I had a thought. We're going to have to deal with artificial locomotion for the long haul. For the uninitiated, artificial locomotion refers to methods of moving around the virtual world in a VR game that involves movement that you aren't actually doing in the real world, whether it be by tilting an analog stick, pushing along with momentum and low gravity, or gliding along the air. By all means, just about everything we do to move around in a regular video game can be considered a form of artificial locomotion. It's been around since before even VR itself existed and can be found all over the place in VR games today. If you haven't played VR or video games much, you might wonder why you'd want to move around using artificial means when you have the option of moving around in the real world. Well, the key here is the real life part. Your motions in the real world may be limited by the situation around you. Not everyone has a whole warehouse they can use to play VR in, and even if you do, not every video game environment can be replicated easily in the real world. VR development often assumes that players will only ever have about as much space as a small room can accommodate. As such, a lot of VR experiences that want to have larger, more expansive worlds need a method to enable players in limited IRL spaces to explore them, hence why we use artificial locomotion techniques. As they're in essence what we've been doing with video games for a long time, there's lots of expertise on their development, and they've more than proven themselves sufficient for enabling exploration of whole virtual universes, so clearly they're up to the task for VR as well. With just this explanation, you'd be forgiven for thinking that we don't need anything else for VR and could stop trying to develop new VR locomotion solutions altogether. But seeing as you're on a channel I started working on for the sake of exploring solutions to the VR locomotion problem, I'm pretty sure you can guess that artificial locomotion has its problems. Let's start off with the most obvious one. It's not immersive. VR's present reliance on motion controls has brought along with it some perks that may not be abundantly clear on a first glance. Our present headset stimulation systems only really interact with two of our senses, sight and hearing. It's thanks to the intrinsic immersion of our senses of proprioception, kinesthesia, and equilibrioception that translating our real-world motions to the virtual world brings that enhances the experience of VR immersion to presence-inducing levels. Artificial locomotion presently does nothing for the three senses I just mentioned, which results in moving around via artificial locomotion not feeling anywhere near as immersive as actually moving can. This on its own can be a bit unfortunate. The fact that some of the artificial locomotion methods we currently use can be a bit janky at times doesn't help matters either. To explain, let's use the example of smooth locomotion via an analog stick. There can be a bit of an issue getting the direction you want to move right depending on what entity the analog stick applied movement is in relation to. The object, the viewport, or the hands. The problem with making it in relation to the orientation of the object is that motion control movement presently is unbound, and turning IRL divorces that movement from your avatars, which can result in you moving in a direction that you're not expecting. Making things based on your viewport works a little bit better, but now means you need to adjust your turn direction if you want to look off to the side. Hands can be another good option, but can likewise be janky if you're doing something with your hands while moving at the same time. Of these, the latter two options are really the best solutions that we've come up with at this point that don't require additional hardware. Ultimately though, the biggest problem of artificial locomotion that goes beyond not feeling immersed or feeling a bit of jank is one that some people just haven't been able to overcome. VR motion sickness. Motion sickness is caused by the disconnect in what our brains are expecting on a sensory level and what they are actually receiving. In this case, the lack of stimulation of our inner ears that should come with movement is at odds with the visual stimuli that our VR headsets are providing us. 
You could be moving forward in game, but the fluid in your inner ear isn't showing that. This discrepancy tends to cause in a significant amount of people, a sense of motion sickness. Not unlike what some people experience when they're on a boat. In the face of people genuinely feeling nausea and discomfort on a physical level, it's no wonder that we have to have comfort reading levels in the medium in order to prevent people from tarnishing their impressions of VR based on this issue of artificial locomotion. While quite a few people are relatively unaffected by this issue, myself included, or can grow to overcome it, there is still a portion of people for whom VR is basically unusable as a result of this lamentable issue. Then again, this isn't exactly big news to anyone who's been involved in the VR game for very long. I thought this was going to be an issue before I even had my first headset and started designing my VR rig with this in mind. But seeing the direction the VR market is heading in, I think I've come to accept artificial locomotion in spite of its flaws. At the end of the day, artificial locomotion still does exactly what we need it to. If we want to explore a virtual world bigger than a few dozen square feet, it's either artificial locomotion, teleportation, or bust at this point. And hey, it can be easy to forget in the scheme of things, but there's more to VR than just moving around in the virtual world. Stopping here and there to enjoy the scenery is more than worth your while. What's more, gameplay outside of moving around can also be pretty good at getting your mind off the locomotion problem here. I was too busy trying to level up and take down monsters to think about whether or not I was moving with an analog stick half of the time, and trying to dodge attacks in Journey of the Gods kept me on my toes likewise. Before it was associated with VR, immersion in a game was more about getting so lost in the array of systems at play to notice the world around you. We mustn't forget that the wonder that art can instill in us is just as present in VR as it is in just about everything else. While I really do wish there were better options for mitigating the motion sickness artificial locomotion can induce in some people, it does bring me some hope that it is at the very least possible for quite a few people to develop VR legs, and that improvements in the display experience of VR has also steadily helped in reducing the sickness many people feel. Developers and the VR community want to make sure as many people as possible can enjoy these virtual worlds together, and all the effort we see being put into discovering ways to mitigate motion sickness, a la teleportation, snap turning, vignetting, and slowing down movement, shows that the fight to make artificial locomotion more manageable for us all is still being fought. Ultimately, I think artificial locomotion is going to be here to stay for quite a long time. While other methods of locomotion are likely to become more prevalent in the future, whether that be expanding the virtual world by having it conform to the real one, using more omnidirectional treadmills, or even trying to improve upon the technique by using more tracking tech to enhance its effectiveness, standard smooth or snap locomotion using a touchpad or analog stick is probably going to be the standard for having a greater reach in the virtual world till we completely overcome the VR locomotion problem via either a brain computer interface or sophisticated movement rigs. Though I personally still want to do more experimentation on alternatives like my VR rig design before throwing in the towel, I've come around to a sort of peace with artificial locomotion. Realizing that my current favorite way to move around the world is just smooth locomotion via an analog stick. And judging by how quickly the community complains about not having a smooth locomotion or smooth turning option in VR games that opt not to offer it, it would seem that I'm not alone in that position. <laughs>